importance of having a plan. Why do you need a plan? Well, hmm. You ever seen anything done professionally that didn't have a plan? There wasn't a plan to it? If you ask a guy to build a building, what's the first thing he's going to do? He's going to develop a plan, right? How you do it? You can, and that's, that's true in every profession. If you go to a, uh, a doctor, let's just say, he's going to have a plan of treatment for whatever ails you. Uh, if you, get, you know, they have a plan. They're not going to think about every time that, that when a, customer, a patient comes in, they're not going to reinvent the plan. If you, if you need X, then this is the plan. And they're going to uh, act in that fashion. So it's very important that we have a plan. The other thing that's important about having a plan is a plan is, a, is something that you learn from. Yeah, you know, I was talking earlier about the, the 23 times or so that we went over this particular plan and how easy and comfortable I was after 23 times. Well, I think if you, if you will take this to yourself and make it your plan, that you can learn from it by each encounter with the customer. You can say, what did I do right? Did I get the expected result? Did I not get the expected result? You know what I'm saying? As, as organizations go, uh, we sometimes have patterns that allow us, or uh, as a result of those patterns, we make the same mistake over and over and over again. I was thinking about this. I don't live on the farm these days, and I do a lot of walking. And uh, sometimes when I go out and I, I go a certain way, and, and, and there's blackberry briars around, you know, and, uh, and I'm thinking if I walk by the same briar and get stuck by it twice, I mean, I'm not thinking too smart, am I? The next time I come that way, I should avoid that issue. Well, it's, that may be an oversimplification. But the idea is that from each encounter, you learn something. If I said that a little bit differently, and, and I'm amazed in selling when I talk to people in our group nationwide, the number of companies who don't have any kind of sales plan. And they go out there and they say, here, go sell this guy, wait on this guy. And they go out there and they have no idea of what they're going to do, when they're going to do it, and how they're going to do it. It's a random exchange with the customer and the results are disappointing. The national average for the closing rate in selling TV and appliances is about 50% on the first encounter. And almost 50% of the customers who buy products that we sell buy the brand they went out to buy at the first place they go. Half of them. That's the statistic. Now, what that is is saying that the average salesperson is, is average. And what we want to do is improve those statistics so that the closing rate becomes higher than 50% on the first encounter. So that's, that's why we uh, need a sales plan. We talked just a little bit about the uh, importance of uh, first impressions, first impressions and dress. When you go to a professional's place of business, whether it's a doctor or a lawyer, you have some expectations, right? Would you be comfortable going into a dentist office if uh, he came out in his blue jeans and his, uh, looked like he'd been working in the yard? Probably not. You'd say he didn't look professional, right? But what we want to do is, is match our appearance to the customer's expectations for a professional salesperson. It'll help us to make a good impression, which will add credibility to what we say. Now, that's kind of superficial. A lot of people look at that. 
and say, well, looking the heart helps. So the first, last thing you want is a bunch of negatives to overcome. So, dress, look, professional. The name tag. I mean, it's a, it's a, a little thing, but it's important, I think, because it helps the customer respond to you using your name. And very quickly, you want to be using their name. But now when they come in, you can't go up and stick a name tag on them, so you're going to have to, in the greeting process, find out what their name is. But it's an aid to them to be able to remember your name, so you have tag on. The other thing it's an aid for is you want the customer to remember that they bought their new appliance from Terry at Handy. Yeah, okay. Or Nancy at Handy. You don't want them to remember it. Did they just bought it in Hansy? Because what? The next time they come in, Terry would like for them to ask for him. So that gives him an advantage. And a second transaction is much easier than the first because you can start with a basis of trust already established. That's how you build customer loyalty. Those things make sense. But yet, when I go sometimes into the stores, and I don't get a lot, but I see people without name tags. Don't cost you anything to have a name tag, because if you don't have a name tag, call down here, we'll get you a name tag. Because it, it's important, and it's an aid. That's all it is. The, the store. In our stores, we have salespeople who are responsible for areas. It's important that the store be neat and organized and clean. Fundamentals. Our stores are not fancy. By and large, they are not fancy. Not our impression or our desire to look fancy. What we want is a nice, clean environment that people feel comfortable trading in. Fancy. Yeah. Fancy costs money, uh, and people understand that. And we try to play to the low overhead uh, image. That's what we are. They don't even uh, you know, be ashamed of that. And our, our consumer base is the average person in Alabama. There's a lot of companies that, that are doing what they call niche marketing. They want to appeal to this group or that group or, you know, that other group. Well, everybody needs home entertainment and everybody needs appliances. So there's no need to pay to a niche because it's a broad-based product need. And our, the biggest market potential that we have is the average person. So our store should be comfortable for the average person. That's that's why we're we're the way it is. Everything should look like we uh, have uh, reasons to uh, look uh, comfortable, clean, and neat. Nobody wants to look at anything in a dirty environment. And it's it's a turnoff. And remember, you want all these pluses on your. You don't want any negatives. You want it like you're ready to demonstrate the product, you want the product looking good, you want it working right, you want to know how it is, where it is, you want to be able to move fast. Speed is important. Customers don't want to wait while you run around and look for the remote that goes with the TV. They do not want to stand there. And so you need to be organized to the standpoint that you know where the remote is or you have it in your hand or you got it's on the cable or whatever the deal is. But that's all part of a plan having everything in place. If you plan to do something, have the tools with you when you go out to do it. That way, uh, you can do it quickly. The third thing I have down here is what should we expect from the customer? The customer comes through the door. What do you expect? You look at somebody when they come through the door and you can make a judgment right or wrong, whether they are a buyer or not. Okay. You can look at people and say, oh, he's not going to buy anything, and, and sit on your behind. Right? That's one possibility. I see that happen a lot. On Saturday, lots of times I get on my old blue jeans and my uh, shirt, my ragged old clothes I wear around the farm. And sometimes I go out to buy something looking like that. And I'm amazed. I went to look for a car a few 
weeks ago, and uh, I went out to a Cadillac dealership to look at a car. And I was in some old blue jeans, and they had holes in them, and an old raggedy T-shirt, and some tennis shoes. But you know where I walked? I wandered around the car lot, and nobody come out and talk to me. But I could have wrote a check for any car they had on that lot that day. Wouldn't have been no problem. But they they disqualified me because I didn't look like a buyer. Now I don't know what they thought a buyer ought to look like. But I'm what I'm trying to tell you is. Expect all buyers. Now, why is that important? Because if you expect all buyers, that will affect your attitude. <laughs> when you see somebody come through the door and your mind starts to say, they're not going to buy anything, say, shut up, devil, get behind me, that's a buyer. And get over there and greet them. That's the way you do it. Doesn't matter what they look like, how they're dressed, or anything else. One of the biggest sales I ever made in the early days of Handy TV, I made to a black man who came in wearing overalls, okay? He was obviously a working man and he was on his way home. And he was driving an old raggedy pickup truck. But he bought a $3,000 big screen and paid me for it. And we followed him home in the truck and I probably delivered that and set it up in his house it didn't make any difference what the man looked like. He wanted to see the product. He had some interest in it. We sold it to him. Now, when he came in and, and wandered over toward the big screens, you know, somebody could have said, and he could have left with his $3,000 still in his overalls. But it's important that we not judge people based on any preset ideas that are in our head. They're... Everybody's a buyer. That affects your attitude. Your attitude affects the customer's attitude. <laughs> I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see a buyer. Right? But it's amazing how few people come into our stores to get out of the rain. Not many. There are few people that come in to just cool off and enjoy the air conditioning. Not many. Today, people are busy. Everybody's got more than they can get done, so when they come in the store, they come in there to buy something or to get a problem solved. And we need to get it solved quick. So we expect all buyers. The interesting uh, part of the thing that uh, statistically, there's been a lot of research done on sales and sales presentations. And... Uh, I've been doing this stuff for 35 years. I hate to tell you that, but I started when I was, I was just a baby then, you understand, but uh, 35 years. And uh, I've sold a lot of product to a lot of different people. And what I found out is when greeting a customer, it's important to listen. Listen. When you go up and say, hi, I'm Bill Hancock. What brings you in today? You get the customer. You come in and you say, hi, I'm... Introduce yourself. What brings you today? I mean, that, they're going to tell you. But you got to listen. I don't care to tell you that you need a canned greeting that would say, don't always say this, don't always say that. Say what feels natural to you. Uh, but be sincere in what you say and then listen to what the customer says and remember what they say. And you'll try different greetings. If you, if you are thinking about the process of selling, you will try different greetings and you'll find one that you like that you can use over and over. The thing about a plan is you don't have to reinvent it every time a customer comes in. A plan is like a tool. It's an aid. It'll help you accomplish your objective. And that's why you need a plan. Take the plan, make your greeting, and I, I suggest introductions, handshakes, whatever. Uh, if you want to shake hands with a man, you're a man, that feels good, that's fine. If he comes out, if you, you don't, may not be comfortable shaking hands with ladies. 
I don't know. Some ladies may not be comfortable shaking hands with you. You don't have to force the issue. But generally, if you say your name and say, hello, I'm so-and-so, they will respond. <coughs> and by their body language, you'll know <coughs> how to proceed. And <coughs> How should we greet the customer? Well, just like you would greet anybody in the sense of that. And then you want to find out what their interest is, and that can be part of the uh, idea that your, your opening question is. What brings you in today? Um, did you have anything in particular in mind? Uh, can I be of service to you? Probably the oldest cliche is, can I help you? And that's not a real good question because it tends to say, they tend to say no a lot to that question. And uh, they'll say, I'm just looking, or they start to explain their presence. What that means is that you're, when you say, can I help you, you're like skipping a couple of steps. <laughs> you want to get the green, you want to uh, understand what their need is. You want to find their interest. When you get into to finding their interest, uh, there again, it's the listening process. Uh, maybe they need him.